Live. So this is late late night parents. I'm Ted Hicks. Across from me, none other than is a Rich Valdez. Ways to follow the show is late night parents dot com. Um, I'm not even sure what to say after this week, Rich. But first and foremost, how are you doing? I am fine. Family are all well. Everything is good on my end. Thank you, Ted. Good to be here virtually across the, the desk from you. Uh, first broadcast, at least for me, first broadcast of the year. So, yeah, things going on here on Haps and everywhere else. But I'm doing fine, and this is only water. It's not much. <laughs> um, <laughs> big shout out to Haps, YouTube, uh, WGBB, 1240 AM, um, all the above. All of our friends, uh, the underground, um, man, it's a couple of other affiliates. I, I, I'm forgetting right now, but um, it's a new yeah, year. Affiliates overseas? We still getting affiliates overseas catching us? Oh, our good friends at XRP Radio. Yeah. We still grab the podcast. Uh, Tiz nice. Shearer, want to give him a big shout out. Um. Yeah, it's 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 a crazy week, Rich. Crazy, crazy week. Um, I'm not even sure what to say to you with what we witnessed. I mean, first of all, um, you know, we physically used to work together in a, in a physical office. Now everything is virtual. Yes. Even when you know you were in a physical office, I'm not in a, in an office anymore. Um, you know, together. Because of COVID, um, right? But this past week, dude, like the insurrection, this this felt like, um, you know, we had a lot of lives were lost. Um, just this this rhetoric, this hate speech, and people being activated. I I, I don't know what else to say, Rich. It, it's, it's, it's easy to say. Easy, most easiest, the most chaotic day in U.S. history during my lifetime. Okay, more this, this was this was more chaotic than nine eleven, uh, and I say that because nine eleven was we we saw it as it started, you know, almost I, I, not controlled but immediate external terrorist attack. We were kind of able to determine that, you know. And move on from there. We know how to handle that. We know how that's caused. We know what's going on. You know, it was still crazy how it was affecting the country, but we know how to how to deal with these things. This, I mean, you know, what's the closest thing you could call it? Think about it. Boston Tea Party, and even then, that was against the Brits. You know, this is insurrection. This is some will say treason. This is. Homegrown terrorism, don't try to call it any other thing but that. This is not protested. This is terrorists, American terrorists attacking the American government. When you we saw what's going on on TV, now I, I missed the beginning of it. You know, as it started going down, then I started getting text messages and seeing things like, you know, people ask them, are you watching this? Are you seeing what's going on? And, you know, first it's the climbing the buildings. Then they're trying to break into the buildings and breaking glass. Then they're crushing police officers and doors trying to get through. And then you see some of these knuckleheads walking around in, in offices. You know, you had this guy with his feet up on Pelosi's desk, and the other one, one carrying out Pelosi's podium, and then the other one who jumped off the, off the balcony and into Pence's seat in the house. I mean, this was insanity. And well, I, I, we'll get into some more of the how it would have been handled differently if it was other people. We'll get into that in a bit more. But this was just uh, the most chaotic thing which you know I've ever seen in my life happening here in the States. And if anyone says they didn't see it coming, they didn't have their eyes open. We want to give a big shout-out to Bobby Shadow from Newport Beach. Bobby, what's going on? Have checked out your show on a couple of occasions. Keep doing what you're doing, and thanks for thanks for the um, the follow. Um, Rich definitely want to get back to. It was just beyond crazy. I'm trying to get the photos correct on here. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, but I want you up here also. So let's see how we're going to do this. This is... And okay. while you're doing that, you know, <laughs> just, just, just talking about, you know, the people that were there who not long ago were screaming, Blue Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter. But there they are attacking police officers. Rich, the died. craziest thing yeah. I've ever seen in my life. Yep, and all and all this following a man. I'm sorry, they're not supporting the presidency of the United States. They're no. to this man. They're worshiping an idol. Maniac. Yep. an idol, an eagle maniac, who has already said, "Oh yeah, he he wants his people to to snap to him like Kim Jong Un's Mister Mister North Korea's people snap at him." This is this is a, an eagle maniac. This is a guy who you know again I. I won't speak on things that I don't know, but I've read whose family was did not exactly raise him in the most democratic society thoughts or weren't raised in that type of, type of ideology. Uh, and they and they're falling for it. And it's purely nothing but a, nothing but a power grab. It's all about power. It's all about people who believe they have power, and you know, they get voted in by the people, but still they believe they have the power to do whatever they want, and they don't want to give up that power and do anything to keep it. And they didn't realize just how much of a madman they were following. Or if they did, they chose to ignore it. Until now you're hearing so many people, I'm not going to say apologize, but, you know, now they're, they're calling it off. Now they're, 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 they're going on the offense saying, no, this was wrong. We shouldn't have done this. You know, this is too far. Could have said something about that five, year, five years ago before the man even got into office. But definitely could have started removing and pulling back your support four years ago, three years ago, two years ago instead of almost blindly following him just because he is supposedly in the party that you're a member of, not looking at what was best for the country and best for the people. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an ugly situation. Um, and now it, we're a few days uh, beyond that point because the shock and awe is over. I mean, I don't know about you, but like the, 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 night, the previous night before this insurrection, Twitter was ablaze because – there were so many independent video journalists out there recording this type of stuff. And I'm right. like, man, everyone, I, I, I said, I knew everyone was going to DC, but I was like, right. I had no idea it was going to be at that level. And because none of this was a surprise. No, none of that, it was a surprise. It. Right. So we yeah. saw this, we, we, in, in a certain way, we kind of saw this coming. Um, in a certain way, we saw this coming, and like I said, the night before, um, the end of see when when everyone thinks of well, not everyone, when, when the masses think of you know journalism or you know cable mm-hmm. news networks, there's so many independents out there that were pulling right. footage and putting footage up online, and you were like, whoa, wait a minute, what the hell is going on here? Right, right. And then that's and then that's true. when you finally see it and you're like, Oh so that from the, the previous night, it's it's pretty hard to say law enforcement wasn't aware because law enforcement was out there. Law enforcement was out there. It was you know, if if the security details of the police forces and you know, those who were supposed to monitor and can keep, keep an eye on these things. I've been doing so on the channels and, and, and media and venues on which all this was being discussed, a la Parler, and you know, the, the hidden sites, uh, pages, like on Facebook and, and the like. We, me, we have been talking and, about and Gab, and, and... Yeah, all those sites. They've been talking about it. They've been saying, okay, well, so we'll meet over here, and do you think we're going to be able to get in this building over here? And wait, oh, well, well, don't get on a plane because you don't want to take a chance. If you're going to carry anything with you, I'll pick you up over here. Or we can take the car together. This was blatantly discussed on those sites. And right. obviously it was completely ignored. And then, you know, we're hearing that, you know, the, the, the D.C. police was asking for, for support and the Capitol Police were asking for support. And they kept getting denied that support which they were requesting. And now look what happened. But 
had let it let it have been some other people who were just going to do what was clearly not a, a violent uh, protest. Let them just talk about it, and you would have had the Capitol building lined up with armed to the hilt SWAT teams and ready for anything. And they would not have let a person get, let alone get over the wall and get into the building. They wouldn't have let a person climb the wall. They would have been shot. Well, I, I, I think I'm, I'm going to be fair. Um, mainstream media, the, the, the morning after, um, mm-hmm. after the situation happened, I heard that echoed on many occasions that if this was BLM or BLM related or somewhat mm-hmm. affiliated with BLM, there would have been, you know, tear gas and, and flex right. and, 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 dogs and, and dogs and water and water cannons. Cannons. <laughs> A little bit of everything, and it's it's like yep. that's where you start to look and you say, "Are are there two Americas?" You kind of wonder. You know the answer. No, you know? this is true. Hey, and maybe I, this I, might have have given some people the understanding. You know, those with somewhat of an open mind might have looked at this, or did. Excuse me, I won't even say might. Some of those with more open minds did look at this and say, "Oh, wait a second now." This this response here. Is nothing like you know what the response would have been otherwise, and this could have been treated and you know handled completely completely differently. But then you know let's not also let's not forget the the allegations that you know some of this was inside job. You know there are more many many reports of officers from various locations around the country coming in there with the quote unquote protesters. Uh, we'll call them terrorists from now on, and you know flashing badges and saying you know give me police least courtesy and let me get in here with, with my friends and doors right. being left open and you know a whole lot of support on the back end of this no one you know i can't i'm not even going to say no one's going to talk about that because they are starting to talk about that because it is starting to all come out uh the department of justice fbi all kinds of investigations have been started they're looking at you know who is it the the, the uh capital police chief has yeah. either has resigned or is being forced to resign he was uh, scheduled I just want to jump in. He was he yeah. mentioned he was, he received the call. He I, I guess through a, a through his you know through the press it was mentioned January sixteenth. He's already gone. Right, he's gone he's already. Already gone. And, and there's a couple of a couple more big quote unquote you know a couple of security leads who are now going to be resigning over this. Of course, um, this is going to get deep. This this is going to go farther down the rabbit hole than anyone's going to want to believe when the investigations um, go deeper. Unfortunately, what we're going to also find is military, because right. you know the support is so strong for the president within the military, and mm-hmm. you know it just gets down to the point where you know all of this talk. After a while, people become activated. Right. And people are unable to tell what's what's what. So that when those words were spoken, hey, you go march down there and go show how strong you are. And I'm gonna march down, I'm gonna be I'm gonna meet you down there. Right. You re- remember the term putting a battery in someone's back? <laughs> and off and run, off they go like like the bunny. Right. They brand names, right? Well, see, the thing is, that I don't say that this was people misinterpreting what they were being told. They did exactly what they were being told. There was no misinterpretation at all. He, it, this was intentional attempted insurrection, like, or, or at the very least, intentional attack on the on the Capitol and attack on the building. That you know, that's there. There was no. Oh, well, we didn't really think there was no misinterpretation of words being said. This, what happened, is what was intended to happen. By Mr. Trump. So af- after all of this, you know, after everything what we saw, you know, government officials, um, you know, we saw people being, you know, uh, footage, video footage of, mm-hmm. you know, the um, uh, Air Force protester mm-hmm. or invader being being shot, you know, the politicians still went amongst most of them, well, some of them went amongst party lines and still continue to object. A, a, a number of the, a lot of them 
said, all right, enough is enough and changed. Enough is enough, I'm out. And yeah, a lot of them, you know, said, no, this is just beyond anything we were ever willing to be a part of. But yeah, you're right. There was still a number of them that stuck with the whole story, that stuck with the uh, denying the electoral count. Right. And, and, and stayed with the, 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 the insanity. Now, I, I, I'm just going to still, so all hell has broken loose. And I'm still going to roll with this this BS. Yes, that's what they said. All right. So I mean, let's let's not think that let's not think that they're all out of their minds. It's it's these um, a good number of these people really believe what they're hearing. They really believe every single thing that's put in front of their face on whatever social media platform they may be on. And they're going to follow the rhetoric. They're going to follow the lies. It, it, it won't matter. You're hearing stories and, you know, people who still right now this minute saying, oh, no, no, that wasn't uh, Trump supporters. That was Antifa that was out there doing all that. That wasn't really the, the supporters. And even the supporters are out there saying, no, 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 no. Don't tell them it was Antifa. It was us. We're taking credit for it. Right. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> it, you know, it's, it was, it's, you hit a certain level of insanity. Insanity mm-hmm. at the same time, when they meet together, when you hear Fox News saying, no, this wasn't Antifa. These were terrorists, domestic terrorists. Let's, let's get it clear. And mm-hmm. everyone that was complicit along the way, I think, uh, you know, when the investigations run their course, it's going to be a lot of people going to jail. As as there should be. As as a matter of fact, I and I mentioned this somewhere else, just inquiring. I mean, so hypothetically, let's say five young teenagers or five five adults go someplace together uh, to a to a club. One of them gets to an argument in the club and shoots someone and kills them, and they all leave together. Um, I, I, you know, bad analogy. They all go to a store to rob a store. Okay. No one's intending to, to shoot anybody. One of them shoots somebody and kills them. They all get that murder charge unless right. they find out who the actual person is who did the shooting. Same situation here. You've got a, an officer of the law who was doing his job defending the building who died during the process. Everybody right. there should be catching the charge. I, I've got to jump in because I want to make sure I know correctly what was said or what, what was the issue. Was this officer hit with a fire extinguisher or and was killed, you know, and later died? Or was this because I, I've, I've heard someone was hit with a fire extinguisher and I was also heard that, you know, someone suffered a heart attack. I've heard there was the officer that was beaten with the fire extinguisher. Right. And, of course, the person who lived who was shot. And then there were a few heart attacks, a few medical emergencies that they, they you know, that are being pinned exactly on the violence directly. It's, you know, we'll call those side effects. There are three or four of those, something like that. Okay. Okay. So From what I've read. Um, we'll be talking about this for a while. Um, I, I would say to you, impeachment, 25th Amendment, resignation, or let the clock run out. I, I'm going for the latter. They're going to let the clock run out. Oh, I thought you. What do I think is going to happen, or what should happen? What do you think is going to happen? I think it is going to end. Twenty uh, fifth amendment is off the table. That's okay. that's. They're not going to do that. There's no way. Definitely not. Um, impeachment. I think. I still think could happen. But is there enough and, time? Is there enough time? Well, look how fast they're able to get judges confirmed. Look. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, suddenly you want to you want to make something happen. You can make it happen, and there's you know there's a, a strong political reason for them to do that, so that they can just when they get this guy off the books and never have to deal with him again. Because let's face it, sure, there's still some wackadoo parts of the party that are like, yeah, but we still support him. But the majority of the party is, has even said, all right, we we got to get rid of this guy, and if he's not in. If he's impeached, he can never run for public office again. And then well, that he, takes was in, 
he was impeached the first time. Not he fully. Ran, he was not found guilty. He, he ran and impeached. got 75 million votes. He didn't get convicted. Okay. Remember, it didn't it? So he's got to get both. You know, both houses have to have to impeach, and then he can never. He's convicted, and he can never run again. And he's out of public office, and that's that. Not that it would stop him from spewing his mouth, because then he's a private citizen. Right. But then also let the lawsuits begin, let the criminal investigations begin, and yeah, that's the end of Donald Trump, most likely. Um, I think they let the clock run out, but he's pulled off. There, it's no Donald, step back. You're you're done. Vince is going to finish out the next. What are we at now? Twelve days, and ten tomorrow. Yeah, 10 tomorrow, and then that'll be it. So, you know, fortunately, um, he's been neutered on social media. Was it Twitter, I think I said, permanently at this point? He's done. Uh, Facebook, Facebook, I don't know if they said permanently, but they said indefinitely. Yeah, Um, Yeah, until his term is over. Yeah, exactly. Uh, And that includes Instagram also. So... Right, that, exactly. That's jamming them up from what two hundred million followers or whatever like yep. that. Yep. I mean, and noting I'm, that some of the people are the same people. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> but still, yeah. you know, got them over there. You know, the the biggest, the allegedly biggest app that is is constituents used Parler. That's that's off. You know, Amazon has said no, nope, we don't want that stuff on our servers. We're not hosting that anymore, and. Apple said, no, we're not going to put that app on the App Store anymore. So Parler is pretty much done, as are a couple of other sites. As I saw a very brief list of something like 10, between 10 and 15 different sites and organizations which are pulling the plug on his social media uh, abilities. So combine the two, and, you know, that will help get us through a, a long portion. Now, will they still do these things, or maintain these bans and suspensions? Um, after he's a public citizen, probably because he's going to be the same person saying the same lies. So those things don't change. Um, and, you know, some of the social media outlets do have rules that if you try to open up another account to get around a ban, well, that account gets banned too. So this, you know, his voice will be neutered for a while. But unless he ends up, you know, in, in jail or something like that, his voice is not going to go away. Uh, shout out to our friend Bannerman from Gulfport. Bannerman, what's going on? How you doing, Bannerman? Um, so I want to want to take a step back because the hypocrisy I want to mention, and we get to mention the hypocrisy while we're riding the platforms, um, right. Twitter and Facebook. Um you know, which is also, you know, Periscope for as long as it's going to be alive. And Instagram um, took a lot of money during 2016 campaign. Um, you know, the, the, the advent of fake news and everything else like that. Um, took a lot of campaign money, Rich. Yes, they did. You know, advertising dollars and all of this other stuff and looking the other way. And did we influence an election? That's what those were the discussions that were happening, you know, four years ago. Mm -hmm. So you run its course, you take tons more of money. And now all of a sudden, after all hell breaks loose, you're like, you know what? I want to, I want to, I want to distance myself from this. Right. I mean, I'm 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 not giving them, I'm not giving them an out at all because you, you still, they still had, they had until this. This is kind of evidence on, on or a case of way you can justify the bad name of accounts, things like that. But they still did have to balance that free speech uh, line. You know, you can't ban things because it's political. That would be wrong. But you should be able to ban and actively ban when there is blatant lies or are blatant lies. And that's what they. That's the part that they didn't follow up on properly. They let a lot of that go through, and people still saying things, and then they believe the things they hear. And it, many, you know, Rich, how many times did the CEOs have to testify that we were watching on our computers or, or watching through C-SPAN? Yeah, like, oh, no, yeah, they're up again. They're seeing this this committee. 
You know? Yeah. No, true. You know, I, I just think there's a lot of hypocrisy. Um, it's kind of like when there's two minutes left in a game. Mm-hmm. Here's, here's my sports analogy um, that we did not discuss in pre-pro. That <laughs> <laughs> there's two minutes left in the game, and now I'm going to change the rules. You know, you're, right. you're rounding right. all the bases, and the minute you get the third base up, oh, Rich, I'm going to send you back around because – you know, I don't think you touched first base and second base appropriately. You know, yeah, and, and I, 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 I just see the hypocrisy there. And, and, and now you allowed this for all these years because we're just talking about the presidency. What about pre-presidency when he was just spouting, popping off on, on, on Twitter all day long? When no one took him seriously. Yeah. No one took him seriously. Up, up until election day, no one took him seriously. Okay. He didn't take himself seriously. I mean, we've had that conversation before. No, we have. It was, we it have. was, it was clear in his eyes. He had no no idea that he was, or expectation, that he was going to win the presidency. When he I won, mean, he was like, oh, man, what have I done? Where am I? It, it was deer in the headlights mm-hmm. um, election night, 2016. Um, yep. So. We've gone through all of this policy being, you know, being rolled out on social media and back and forth and all of this, you know. And I'm sure, um, you know, um, these 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 companies have made uh, a, a pretty penny, and that's already been mentioned. But yep. with Parler, I've never logged in. I, I I've never seen it. I have no reason to log in. Um, the and fact that the <laughs> fact that now you can't because the fact that <laughs> Google said I'm yanking you out of the Google Play Store, Apple says I'm pulling you out of the App Store, and and Amazon says yeah, your AWS access is dead. Yeah. Now if they'd all done that, right? Like you're saying, if they had all done these things four years ago, we would not be in the situation that we're in now. No question so, about it. So I'm waiting for you to say if Woody had went to the police. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> you know, so but so let's 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 flip it on the other side. You're a conservative. Mm-hmm. And I guess you use me we or gab or 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 parlor and now you have no access or now your your followers have no access. You're you're an extreme conservative. You're extreme conservative, okay? <laughs> Yes. That that talks very recklessly on on social media. Yes, and now you have no access. Is your First Amendment being violated? Well, I'm going to say no because you still have alternate means where you can speak. Now, if it turns out that what you're speaking is lies, then that's going to get shut down too. You know. It's they they are banning platform or platforms are being shut down, which is affecting everyone on that platform. If you end up, you do have more of a First Amendment issue, I think, if you start uh, individually banning accounts or yanking accounts off the platform, then you're 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 targeting specific people. Now, let's be real. Of course, Parler is known for what it is, so you're just blanketly grabbing a whole bunch of people, but not everyone there is you know the the, the conservative right wing whatever you want to call it, not everyone. So you've just taken down the entire site that was supporting it. And then maybe they go after the sites themselves, like the government tried to do or was trying to do. Um, I'm for sure, if someone's going to argue it, you can be sure there'll be some lawsuit in the, in the near future over exactly that. But I would also think they that the lawyers for all the big companies, before they said we're going to shut these places down, had their lawyers go through that whole exact scenario to say, you know, let's let me make sure... We don't get hit with some kind of civil rights violation, you know, on someone's First Amendment. Right. All right. I, I guess we're we're going to table this for now. I want to briefly touch upon uh, two other topics, two maybe possibly three other topics. CES for year two goes virtual. Um, big question is: Will we ever go back to in-person conferences, even after? Even after, after you have after that, COVID. that wonderful vaccine. Yeah. 
I think so. You think, think so? so? Yeah. I mean, CES is always one of the big things. I mean, sure, what you know, you hear some of the, the, the media members speaking about, all right, well, things are being delivered to their houses now. Uh, they're not going to the conference. But it still takes a lot from, you know, the buzz where, right. unfortunately, we've never got that invite. Someone invited us to CES, please. <laughs> we've never gotten that invite. Uh, but, you know, they talk about it. It's like when they're walking around on the floor and running to, you know, uh, a fellow fellow media person. And, oh, man, did you see XYZ over at the so-and-so's booth? You should go take a look at that. You know, and you get buzz on the floor, just word of mouth kind of deal. That obviously isn't happening. Uh, but I think once we get COVID under control, at least initially, there'll be a big wave of these things. Because, you know, the Comic-Cons, CES, you know, all the big industry meetings where the, the professionals within those industries meet, they still want to have those gatherings. And that's, I think, you know, especially the first year or two, that's the big way of saying, okay, we got through it. We're back. You know, there's a sense of normalcy. All right. I'm going to put you on the, uh, on the spot. When do you think these conferences will return? 22. 22. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say 23, if not 24. I think it'll be 22. You might be closer with 23, but I think we get it for 22 because we get the entire, they can, well, I have to hedge that a little bit, right? And say it's all going to depend where we depend on where we stand at December of 21, end of this right. year. Right. Um, you know, they're projecting we can get um, vaccines out to a lot of people by that point. Um I think I think it'll be twenty two or the latter half. I will say, latter half of twenty two. Okay, okay. I'm I'm comfortable with latter half of twenty two. If not early twenty three, we can go back to tech conferences and all the stuff. Even the local stuff. It doesn't have even have to be the stuff that you have to hop on a plane for. That used mm-hmm. to be fun, you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. Getting out there and meeting the vendors and everything else like that. That was. Another thing we, we miss. Um, big week for Roku. Roku has 50 million subscribers or users or however. Um, I am, by default, a Roku user. You know, a couple of times. <laughs> a couple of times. <laughs> Through their Roku TVs. Um, what's going to say to you? Number two, um, Roku purchased Quibi. Quibi that we talked about on, uh, well, we talk about everything, but yeah. we talked about Quibi and we, we a billion dollar digital organization crashes and burns within inside of a year, within inside of six yep. months, and then sells their content to Roku for a hundred million dollars, Rich. Bargain, bargain, bargain. I mean, I have my own personal issues with Quibi. Okay. <laughs> well, with their with the applications and one of the hooks, you know, you know, Quibi's big thing was, gee, let's have ten minute content and charge people for it. Uh, doesn't that already exist and basically for free? You know. Yeah. Um, but I know personally, I had an issue with uh, what was there the Quibi app not functioning properly in the uh, the dual screen mode on a device that was purchased, which touted having that dual screen mode capability within Quibi. And Quibi was part of the uh, subscription fees or subscription bonuses of when signing up for a certain provider. Not going to name names because it's not necessarily a provider. But, I mean, that's a bargain. It's like you just said, somebody's taking a bath on that, of course, because all that money is gone. It's and gone. Roku can pick and choose. Roku can pick and choose what they want out of that if they want anything. They'll take the, the broadcast, you know, pieces of it, maybe and use this to get Roku on your phone, something like that, which would be a smart idea, but they've got the Roku app, right? But maybe they turn it into something like that. You know, they'll they'll own some more shows that they can put up on some channels if they want to, and move on from there. So good for Roku. Um, I think Roku for the long game, and I will Honestly, I will, full disclaimer, I purchased their stock when they went IPO. Their stock is now, uh, I think, a shade under 400 
We'll see you tomorrow. Should be a shade under 400 bucks. Um, unbelievable. Because not only that, the great thing about um, Roku is there's so much that's free. There's so much available content. And then they have, you know, they allow you to connect all the, you know, to all the various providers. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Now, mm-hmm. you're not going to see, you know, high-quality first-run stuff on Roku. Right. So I guess maybe that's the reason why they, they purchased the Quibi, so that, hey, um, if you're looking at bite-sized episodes, or maybe they make it available as, like, a full movie, because it was, like, some show I was watching when I had the the the, the trial version, and it was something with um, Loris Fishburne. Mm. But, you know, they were, like, eight-minute episodes. Right, right. You know, it was, like, eight-minute episodes. But when you put all the episodes together, it was, like, a 90-minute movie. Because that's so, what they were. They were full-scale full, full films, like you say, and they were chopped up to be presented in the Quibi interface. You know, so I think it's a good thing for them. Um, the one smart thing where, I mean, what we've seen over the years is with Netflix, with, Quibi, I mean, with Netflix, with Roku, and all these um, different services, they're being baked into TVs. Right. So it's no longer you have to have that that secondary um, hardware piece that you have to plug in, and hopefully that you know it's going to it's compatible with your TV. It's an app. Mm-hmm. Make it an app. Mm-hmm. I mean, tons. Tons of money that way. Um, question, uh, last question I wanted to ask you was, how was your sleep experience in 2020? I'm one of the lucky ones. Um, <laughs> you know, fortunately, yeah, well, like we all had our issues. There, there was always some points where you get a rough night's sleep just to give out what was happening uh, to yourself, to loved ones, uh, you know, to what's going on in, in the world. I was fortunately one of the lucky ones, but uh, I know there are a lot of people who have sleep issues um, and didn't have a good experience in sleeping in general over the last year, because let's face it, it was crazy, but there are you know, certain things that you can do maybe to make sleeping easier for yourself. I, think I mean, it, you know, yeah. I think um, what I'm reading here is 139 million Americans admit that the pandemic caused them to become a night owl or stay up later, stay up later than they, they used to. Anxiety is the number one reason Americans are losing sleep since the pandemic. Um, you know what's, what's worked for me, Rich? And I know it's worked for you. This mobile phone mm-hmm. in the bedroom. I put mine in sleep mode. <laughs> <laughs> I leave it right in my office, and that's that. Yeah, the, that's one thing that that they did that they do recommend. Either do like you do, get it out, put it in sleep mode, right? Uh, because at least then, or do not disturb mode, because right. of course you can then put in some primary phone numbers that, if they were to call, uh, you might want to take those calls. But otherwise, you you get some rest. I mean, you know, one of the other things that's a uh, that you should really do in general, they say, is to just avoid technology before, yes. you know, just before going to bed. You know, if you can, put the phone away. Uh, don't check your mail. Don't get lost in there because, you know, that can always spiral into out of control. Um, you know, maybe don't, maybe even don't even watch the news. You know, don't get yourself hyped up with whatever may be going on. Um, or maybe stay away from social media. Just give yourself some time before going to bed to just decompress disconnect, relax, and then maybe you might get a better night's sleep. It, I think it's helpful to shut off the CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News every once in a while and just disconnect from that stuff. Completely. You know, um, another good thing is uh, another issue that my wife and I go back and forth with the, the thermostat, it being too warm at night. Uh-huh. That sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> sounds familiar. You know. Uh, I, yeah, the, what, what do they say that you, 
you know, it's one of the things with the human body. You don't want to you don't want to keep things too warm in bedroom before you go into bed. Um, I know personally, I do like it to sleep cooler anyway, because I feel like you know your body just kind of huddles in, you hunker down, and then yeah, you get warm under the covers and right. good night. You know, versus kicking covers off because you're sweating <laughs> and comfortable. <laughs> and, and that's what happens. Yo, yeah, you're sweating bullets. Yep. You're looking at the thermostat and you're like, why is it at 77 degrees? <laughs> you know, and that would be baked. Right. And it's like three o'clock in the morning. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's, that's really, you know, this, I mean, 2020 was a really, really rough year all around. Yeah. You know, friends for family. Um, and I'm telling you, it's like 2021 is just like kicking people right in the teeth with this stuff that we just experienced. And, you know, last Thursday, we hit 4,000 lives were lost. Oh, in a single day. In a single day. In a single day. Yeah, this, this is crazy. And again, and that does get, un- for some reason, it becomes, again, a political statement. Or it does. Forum, but... It doesn't have to be that way. Mm-mm. People would, would listen. If people would just listen and understand science is science. Science is test. Yeah, science is truth. Science, so, I, I, it's that simple. January, you know why you know I'm, I'm excited about January 20th? Mm. Because science goes back to just being science. <laughs> well, see, here's the thing, and I, I, I wish that were true. Uh-oh. I don't think it's going to get just all, suddenly just get so quiet again like we Uh-oh. all wish that it would. I'm just telling you. I don't think it's going to be like that. I think, you know, I, Trump is going to get mired in all kinds of legal battles and things like that. I think he's pretty much neutered for the long term. Initially, he's going to be just mouthing off everywhere wherever he, he, he thinks he can or tries to. Um, but this isn't over because, unfortunately, all those who are riled up and charging and all those who don't get arrested, um, mm-hmm. they're still out there, and a lot of them are still feeling the same way. Right. Um, this, this, there, I, I, I hate to say it, but I think there will be more and, you know, possibly worse before it gets better. Wow. You know, this is the Department of Justice, FBI, they have to, again, focus on hate groups, focus on the white supremacists, you know, those guys seem to have had a little time off and had a free pass for a while. And, right. you know, the, the powers that be have to get serious about understanding that these guys are, are, are in it and are back. Again, uh, I, uh, I'll leave the thought here. As they say, what was it? The last time the Confederate flag was put in the Capitol was almost 200 years ago. Right. 1814, I think, something like that. And then it didn't get any, you know, it wasn't represented. Right. This should not be. I don't know. Man. Well, I guess we're going to call it a show. Um, like I said, the goal is we're going to get to that point. Eh, 30 yes. to 40 minute show. I we would say every 7 to 10 days, hopefully. We could do it. Uh, um... I w- what I would like to do is I'm going I'm to reach out tomorrow to Dr. Michelle to talk about, would love to hear her experience, mm-hmm. um, you know, just with this whole situation. Yep. And um, other than that, I'm out. What's the best way to get in contact with you? You know me on Twitter, Late Night Rich. And I am the real Ted Hicks, and we are out. Everyone, have a great week. See you next time. Yo, yo.